We're at uh, Arrowhead Game Studios today, and we're talking to Emil, who cannot tell us anything about what he's working on. He's uh, there's something going on behind us here that we're not we're not privy to quite yet. It's not quite announced yet. Um, but it, but it's interesting because I I, I assume I sort of just assumed that you were working on Hell Divers, but they're sitting over there and. You got nothing to do with that project. Yeah, well, I I, I can understand that most people do, you know. But um, we have uh, two teams now, mm. which is really interesting, exciting for us as a studio. So um, I'm I, I don't know that much, like too much about Hell Divers. Like I know, I kind of like I probably know more than most people. But you know, I don't know. I'm not like actively part of the development. So. But you maybe stop by and play it for every once in a while. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, I find that interesting. How how long have you had sort of two separate teams? Is that something that you recently did, or have you had that in in the past as well? Well, we have had experience with that, like just trying it out, but mm. haven't really had like a structured attempt. So this is, I would say, that this is the first like real attempt for the studio to have two teams running at the same time. Mm. So these two projects are really is going to be really interesting to see where this takes us. So, so how, what, what does that say? Because I mean, you're a pretty small team in total, anyway. You're not that many people. Uh, what does that say about the, the kind of people? Because I guess uh, when when you divide it, everyone has to know on each team. You have to have all the the competence for everything to make a game. So, are you, are you all sort of jack of all trades, or how does that work? Well, I mean, that's the the ideal situation where everyone can do everything, basically. And everything just gets as good as this. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's not, I mean, we have to, to kind of uh, struggle a bit to find the competence we need and mm. we have been hiring a bit like lately. So, so it's, I mean, it's not easy, but I think we've reached a, a pretty good position now where we can like, we feel safe with the competence that we have. And it's really cool to be able to kind of, um, since we're working on two separate projects, it feels like we're building competence in different directions, and mm -hmm. we feel like we're kind of expanding the studio a bit. So that's cool. That's interesting, and uh, and also I guess I guess having having a smaller team size sort of takes you back to the the early days almost, perhaps as well. Yeah, I mean it's since we're both like expanding and dividing the studio at the same time, we're kind of staying the same in size for the teams. And it feels really nice to be able to work in such small teams because, you know, you always miss that extra resource. You know, it would be awesome to have that, ex like just a uh, concept artist or an extra mm -hmm. animator or an extra programmer and all that. But, but I think um, at the end of the day, I think we're all just happy to be able to work in such small teams. And it's so easy to, to just communicate and like, the flow of the development is much nicer. I mean, mm. we have had some experience like mashing the, the the studio together and having like a lot of people working on the same thing. But there's always the risk of it kind of turning into this sort of corporate structure kind of thing. And I think we can probably reach a bit higher numbers on the studio without doing that. But I think we need to do it slowly. We need to kind of like expand, not too fast. Mm. That's the that's the idea. Yeah, I, I guess I guess it's when you meet someone by the coffee machine and you're not quite sure what the name is, then you've you've gone too far. Yeah, I think that's that's something we then we would have to remove the coffee machine because then we can't we can't have that. That's <laughs> Everyone gets one at at, at their desk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to avoid awkward situations. Yeah. So so you mentioned uh, like the the need or the want to have maybe a concept artist uh, extra or something like that. Do you? What do you do then? Do you do you go outside the company, or do you say, "Well, it's going to take a little bit longer on this," or you know, what what what's the idea there? Well, I mean, it's we obviously use a bit of outsourcing and using like making use of the contacts that we get through the publishers that we work with. It's like it's a pretty strong uh, resource to have. Mm. Um, so so that's what we've been doing up until this point we have been looking at like different i mean it's nice to have ideally we would like to have a concept artist that can also help in production mm -hmm. like that's the sort of thing that we're looking for so i mean it's not easy to find those sort of people but you know it's the and, th and they can make a good living being freelance as well yeah i mean it's really hard to t um, like tie them down to yeah. to the studio so yeah and I guess, I guess, uh, but uh, uh, I guess that's one of the the beauties of because because art is such a such an important part of a video game. It's like 
we can talk about game mechanics as much as we want we can but but you know if you got the art to sell that that's when you really go over the top so it's it's it can't be understated how important that is yeah that's true i mean uh, concept art is like something that you usually don't see in the game mm. but you, you you definitely see the result of it mm. and i mean having the marketing power to just like bring that sort of the art style and the message out to people just to, to make them see how cool it looks and how what a cool game it is that's definitely something that like everyone wants to have that so yeah i mean art we're constantly struggling to like, or struggling sounds like we're like <laughs> drowning, but constant Doing quite well, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're constantly striving um, to become better on the art side of things and like to, to make that. Because I mean, earlier, uh, coming from Magicka, we've kind of had, um, we've come a long way since, mm. way since then. And, and I mean, on the art side, it, that's one of the, the areas, as you stated, that it's like, it really shows when you grow mm. in the, on the art side, which is cool. It's like you, can s you feel like you, you really come a long way. Mm. And, and, and I would have to say that maybe, maybe it's me that I'm not seeing the red thread, but it, it's quite diverse, the, the art that you brought with the three games that I've seen. And, and perhaps the fourth one is, is the same, that it's, it's, it's not sort of on a, on a straight line. It's, it's coming from different perspectives. Mm. Well, I mean, we haven't... Like Magicka was the first game that we made, so the art style was a bit like okay, it's art, you know. Like, and we decided on a few things, and we held, but the art direction was a bit loose. Mm. And with Showdown, we um, we really experimented, like tried to find something. And I mean, we were like, it was cool, but we weren't completely happy where we ended up. So we wanted to kind of take that even further. But but then now when we went back to top down felt that okay so this game is not like we need to find we it's a, we do this on a case to case basis like I, I think it's um, important to to not be tied down to a specific style mm. i mean just like jumping from top down to a side scrolling action shooter game is a pretty big jump as well so now we're just, i think we're trying to find our like our place mm. i think in the sort of like the space of but styles i guess it's liberating as well because the art is such an important part of it that you don't want to because some studios have very sort of influential art directors that you can see as soon as you see a character, that's the studio and, and that's the guy that's responsible for that. Mm. And it, it, but it's, you know, in a way you're a little bit locked down with that and y you have more freedom when you perhaps go on a case by case. Yeah, I mean, it's a very powerful thing to have sort of a profile like that, mm. like to be recognizable. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I agree with you. I mean, we, we really like experimenting with stuff and playing around with stuff. So it really fits us to just like not really be put in that, like had a, have that label, yeah. so to speak. So yeah, I, I agree. I think it's it's cool. It's liberating definitely to work with as well. Mm. And that, uh, that is all perhaps also coming where, where the leadership comes from, if they come from designing games and mechanics and that sort of thing, or if they come from an art side or... Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious that like design has been the like the driving force behind like game design and game mechanics yeah. have been the driving force behind the games that we've made. And I think we want to keep it that way, but we don't want everything else to lag behind. Like we we, we want to bring everything up to speed. But that's that's definitely like the main driving force behind the games we make. So uh, obviously you have two games out now. You there is sort of a, a fan base for Arrowhead Game Studios. Is that is that something that you're becoming aware of now that you're moving on to, to console and things like that, that, you know, perhaps perhaps uh, people want to see your games on PC? Or is there is there like a, an Arrowhead fan base now and that's not just tied to like one game or so? Well, I feel like I haven't really, I guess me personally, I not really realized, I guess, like uh, because for Showdown, Showdown was a bit like under the radar for, for many people. So I guess we'll have to see with Helldiver. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, we I'm saying this because a guy that we're working with, our GRTV, he was like, Helldivers, they got to bring that out to PC because he's been playing uh -huh. Magicka and the Showdown effect and he really likes your game. So hmm. he was a little bit like, okay, well, maybe he needs to get a PS4. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, no matter what platform you leave out, someone's going to yeah. be heartbroken over it. So, 
I think ideally we would we would of course just re release uh, games on all platforms. Yeah. Just but it's that amount of work to to bring it out. So, but yeah, I can. That it's cool. It's an interesting thought. I'm gonna <laughs> think a bit more about that. <laughs> yeah. So if we, um, I don't know how many years has Arrow have been around five something. Is it five? Oh. That depends on how you count. I yeah, guess. I think it's five or something. Yeah, it's it we need to have a cake if it's five. Yeah, I think we should. I <laughs> it feels like like three lifetimes or something. Like I can't even remember what happened at the beginning anymore. It's like that's it's not a good uh, advertisement. No, uh, but it, but it, do, it, it both good and bad sides yeah. really. It's like it's been ups and downs, and uh, it's definitely it has been like an entire lifetime of stuff just crammed into mm -hmm. to this period. So like now it feels like we're we are kind of a. Uh, in a different position, we're in a different place now than we were, but we still have the same sort of passion and the driving force. So that's, mm. yeah, five years. So, so how would you see, like, I mean, that, that this is a typical journalist question, I'm sorry to have to ask it to you, but the next five years, how do you see those playing out and, and uh, like, in any terms that you want to you wanna describe it? Well, obviously, as any studio, we would like to eventually, somewhere down the line, self-publish. Mm. Um, at least try it out, see if we're any good at it. Um, I think the general mentality here is that we don't want to grow too big. Like, we want to settle on a number that feels comfortable without having to, to become that sort of coffee machine awkwardness uh, studio. Um, so I, that's I think that's most the most important thing, and just to like, keep doing what we're doing and, and get better at that. Mm. And I feel like we've we've been missing like what I would like us to have in five years that we don't have now is a more stable base, like a um, like engine development and stuff, like something to to build a foundation to build our games on mm. that makes development easier. Uh, like tools and stuff like that to have that sort of thing uh, more developed. It's a very open answer, I think, to an open question. But uh, um, th there's no, there's no sort of. You don't have a goal that's sort of stated in. That doesn't feel like an arrowhead thing to have like a five-year plan. No, well, not me personally. Maybe you one has some sort of a plan there, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I think we just want to make games. That's the sort of thing we. That that's what we want to do. Um, and we have been talking about some uh, maybe like taking the two teams and coming together into one bigger team and creating some a massive awesome meta experience awesome game i don't know something a, a, a really cool game when these two projects are done then maybe yeah maybe i mean they're maybe not, even later they're not perfectly aligned so Probably. we'll see we'll see <laughs> all right so thanks a lot for your time thank you